There was an idea called the Nerd Initiative. The idea was to bring together a group of remarkable people, see if they could become something more, see if they could work together when we needed them to, to fight the battle of that we never could. All right, what's up, folks? Leo here with the nerdinitiative.com. Uh, welcoming you to our episode one podcast. We got the man with many websites, Kevin, joining us today. Uh, he's got a couple of them out there, heavyvegan.com, kevin7.com, and even heavykev.com. Kevin, want to say what's up? Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is, uh, well, it's Kevin, but it's really, it's Heavy Kev, and, uh, we're just going to, I guess, get started with all this uh, Walking Dead. It's kind of exciting, so. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, so we are in week three, basically, of The Walking Dead uh, for season five. And, you know, we're going to, we're gonna you know, have a little conversation regarding the first two episodes. Uh, the season premiere was by far one of the best season premiere episodes that they've had from the first five seasons i think it's probably one of the best episodes they had in general what do you think yeah to be honest it was kind of like nail body the entire time i mean i was i mean because you know this is the the time where they were you know inside the in the in the train um in the train cargo the cargo train it was like i just wanted to see how they're gonna get out because you know we already know they're gonna get out of it but how are they gonna get out of it and so for the whole time, I was seeing how everybody got united in the end. It was just like, man, it was it was really exciting. The whole whole way through, I was already, I didn't want to leave the screen. <laughs> so what did you think they were going to do? How, how they were going to get out? I honestly, okay, because you, know, um, you know, Carol and um, Tyrese was coming back. I already knew that there, when season four ended, I already had a feeling that that's who was going to save them. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, when... What I thought, to be honest, was that um, you know, because usually they they think of uh, you know you know um, Rick thinks of ways to get out of it. I didn't think they're gonna fight their way out of it. That's one. I honestly thought they were gonna you know, not the way it panned out how the explosions happened, all the 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 army of Walking Dead came through. I really thought they're gonna be able to talk their way out of it, and then fight their way out of it, not the way they were trying to get out of the out of the train. <laughs> the way they did it at the first, I mean, I thought I was like, how? They, I don't think they could fight their way out of that one. Yeah. What kind of, you know, what it was really crazy because what pissed me off was like, well, not pissed me off, but it was, I was cracking up because you know they were at the, uh, they're at the train door, like all geared up, ready to you know go at it. You know what I mean? Right. And then they, <laughs> they opened the top. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's that's, dude, that. Now I'm really kind of curious what they're going to do now because they freaking opened the top on them. Well, see, when they opened the top, I thought, you know, I, I didn't expect them to drop that uh, that tear gas in. I uh, I thought someone was just going to peek right through the top to see if they were leaning up against the walls like they told them. Oh, right, right, yeah. Yeah, I forgot about the tear gas. Yeah, that was, that was kind of jacked up. I mean, damn. Yeah, no, the way the way I thought, it, thought it, what would have happened... Or what was going to happen was, you know, at the end of at the end of season four, you know, I was telling people even on Facebook, you know, Carol and Tyrese are going to be the saviors of the group, right, which, right, which came true. But my thoughts was that they were going to actually, you know, head to terminus and find the bag of guns, you know, just stumble across the bag of guns that Rick left, you know, to kind of give them, you know, this this sign that Rick and them are there. And they would have just used the guns and stormed in there and saved them. But you know, I like the way I like the way it played out, though. You know, having Carol, <clears throat> you know, Carol, uh, just go pretty much gung ho on them. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's cool because you know, you know, season season one, right? They learned that trick um, where they put all the body, uh, you know, the the dead like blood on them, and um, they kind of like wore that coat of. Um, like cloak, right? Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool how they kind of brought back that kind of knowledge that she knew. You know what I mean? Um, I thought that was pretty neat because I remember in season one, Rick and uh, uh, all the guys were you're, you're putting on the 
the, the dad's uh, flesh on her going, oh, oh, this is gross. This is gross. You know, and Carol was the weak, weak one at the in the season one. But now she's like gung ho. Like, man, she went Rambo, like right. straight up on those cats. I mean, like it was like weird because she knew what to do already. You know what I mean? Well, you know, what's funny is now that I think about it, though, now that you mentioned it, if you go back and you watch that episode from uh, season one, uh huh. Carol was never there with them when they did that. That's you know what that is true. I it was just the guys. Yeah. And then I think I think Andrea was there too, and that's about it. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was. They had just a few people with them, but yeah, Carol wasn't there. So that is true. She was back at the camp with her husband at the time, right? Yeah, the one that beat the hell out of her. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <dude>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you know how. That that's that's just weird now that you know thinking about it like how the hell did she know that that would revert the the walkers you know the only thing I could think of and it was kind of weird so I'm, we're kind of jumping around but I guess I'm trying to answer that you know maybe this theory so remember when um, the governor and Rick met up and they had they had the two teams you know um, meet up at that uh, little center. I guess you could say the little, you know, the, the the center point, and they're all having their meetings and talking, and I guess you could say their counterparts were all talking to each other. Daryl's talking to that one. Um, yeah, uh, I forgot his name. Salazar is that? Yeah, Salazar. Salazar. And then um, I forgot who else was talking at the end. I mean, in, in there. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was Herschel. Herschel and the um, um, Daryl. Who else? Uh, Martinez, not Salazar. I said Salazar because you know the dude that plays uh, Martinez, uh, Jose Pablo Cantillo. Uh-huh. He plays Salaz. His his character's name Salazar in Sons of Anarchy. So, oh, so the Martinez. That's who it was. Okay. So and yeah. then it was one more guy, uh, Milton. Milton. So Milton and Herschel were having a conversation. Remember? Yeah. And then they were talking about, and then Milton he writes down everything. Right, right. So the only thing I can think of is Herschel's like, oh, I'll write too. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they had these. Somebody still has that book or these exchange exchange knowledge. Because remember, they had a committee at the at the jail. You know what I mean? Right. So the only thing I think of is that exchange the committee. They all say, hey, these are the rules. This is how we do things. You know, one way to get away from the walkers is to be quiet. You know, no loud sounds. Because I'm pretty sure they all share that knowledge. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And they said, hey, and by the way, if you want to get past them, I mean, because Michonne was there too, you know what I mean? So she probably was like giving her chance. I mean, man, she was out, man, she was, you know, she was doing her thing, cutting off the jaws so they can't bite her and cutting off the arms so you can't, you know, scratch her. Yeah, and kept that smell close to her. Yeah, so. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure Carol found out the trick to it, you know, and uh, made it work, you know, for yeah. this episode. What about what about all the uh, the new cast members? What do you think? How they played out? Oh, like um, you got uh, who do you got? You got Tara, who is played by Alana Masterson, um, Michael Cudlitz, who plays Sergeant Abraham Ford, Eugene uh, Doctor Eugene Porter, that's played by Josh McDermott and Christian Serratos. She played Rosita. She's actually in in uh, Twilight. Is she really? Yeah, she started. I believe she started in Twilight. Uh, I don't know. All, all I know is she's hot. Yeah, yeah, dude. She's a hot one. So maybe that's why I like it. Because <laughs> 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 right? she's freaking hot, man. No, but I'm, I mean, I'm kind of curious how the sar- you know the sergeant, you know, because I I haven't had a chance to really get their names down, but. You know, because Rick, you know, he's got a strong personality now, right? Because he's a leader, and he's he's way more kind of local now. You know what I mean? Right. Like he's he's hardcore now, and then um, you know, I'm I'm kind of glad that they decided to uh, to roll together and stuff. But I'm kind of curious how they pan out because he could be that sh- not shame, but you know, he's tough too now. You know what I mean? That guy, you know, he did his thing. He's he's got a mission. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that, um, that's what that's what you know. Shane was trying to get him back then to this point he's at now. Right. You know, so. But with these new characters, though, <clears throat> you know, I think I think uh, 
you know, it's going to play out pretty close to the comic. I mean, I believe it was either Robert Kirkman or Scott Gimple, the one of the showrunners on Talking Dead that night. <clears throat> they said uh, this is going to be probably the closest we'll ever see it to being like the comics, you know, and these these characters that they introduced were actually in the comics. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, see, I didn't... I haven't got a chance to read the comics because... You know how... I guess it's just me, though, because I do that with all movies or TV shows because it's like... Um, they go, oh, it's not like the book. You know what I mean? Right, right. And I especially hate... So, this is like a big jump, but Game of Thrones, The Red Wedding, right? Oh, yeah. A lot of people knew that was coming. Well, right. I didn't. You know what I mean? Right. And so... Because of that, because people read the book already, they knew that was coming. I wanted to be able to like surprise the shit out of me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I really want to get surprised. That's why I haven't read the comics book yet because everyone's like, oh, Michonne's going to be badass. You know what I'm saying? Because they already know her. Right. Technically. You know, from what people told me because they read the comic book. But yeah. that I did hear that about them saying that it's going to be close to the comic book. And that's kind of exciting because then, for me, I have a, like a bad you know, memory. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to go to those comic books and read up on it some more too. Yeah, no, I got a I got a good friend of mine. He um, he's my intel for the <laughs> comics because he he reads a lot of comics and uh, you know, Walking Dead was one of them. And you know, even even reading online, you know, social media and stuff, it's it's a it, the whole thing's just spoiled no matter what. And yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And I, yeah, I, I try to stay away from it because that very reason. But yeah. it's hard to search the shit too. You know what I mean? Like I really like searching everything. Right. But I'm like, damn. And then I will search something. And I'm like, guess what? I'm like, oh crap. You know what I mean? But they got like spoiler groups and stuff like on Facebook, even websites. You know that spoil it. But you know, with with this, uh, the new, you know, these new character, these new characters that came in, like you, you'll find out just from the comics, you know, what, what's going to happen with these characters. Oh, okay. Like, you know, supposedly, I think in the comics, you know, Eugene, Josh McDermott, the guy who knows, you know, what's really going on, who they're escorting to DC, when they get there, he's like full of shit. That there's, oh. there, he doesn't know, you know, there's no cure or nothing. Or like he didn't know what's really going on. Right. Well, I think he he kind of like said that was it. That was episode run, right? In season five, he was kind of telling them what he knew. Right. 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 So what's interesting is he he, he was like you know he was kind of being cocky about it, like hey, I, you all ain't gonna grasp this at all because I, I can tell you and you'll never figure it out. But he kind of like right there, kind of like said it himself. He didn't know. He just knows he he can come fight a fire of fire. Right. So right. he's gonna try to figure it out. You know. That, well, that's what I got from that, you know. Speaking of new character, speaking of the new, 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 new cast and how they're, you know, with the original cast, you know, Tara. Right. Uh, I have a feeling man, she's like filling Glenn. That's just me. Like, well, she did. If you if you watch back in season four, uh -huh. was it season four? Yeah, the last season. Yeah. Um, Eugene was uh, trying to holler at her, and she she was like, "Yeah, I like girls." Right, right. So I don't know if she's feeling or will be feeling uh, Glenn. Who knows? She might even be feeling uh, Maggie. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? She she might be liking both, right? It was just weird because I remember that because she had a girlfriend when they hooked up with the governor in that right. one camp. You know, she she's with that Navy SEAL girl, yeah. whatever. Yeah, that military so, chick. Yeah, so it was kind of – I was kind of taken off. It's, I don't know if she's really feeling them, like, you know, like – but something about his love for Maggie is what I think she's into. Like she wants that. You know what I mean? Right. Right. No, that's that's a good point. Yeah. But I don't know where that would where that would lead to. You know, in the story. Yeah, that's that. It's just weird because it, it almost seemed like they emphasized it enough. Because like there was a scene where Glenn was walking away or something or talking to Maggie and she was like staring at him. You know what I mean? Like. They, they that they for some reason they panned off into that you know view to so so Terra looking at them you know what I mean was it in season or episode one of this I season? think it was in two it was two. in two it's the beginning right 
Yeah, where I think Maggie it's... kisses him and then she walks off, or they walk off together or split up, and then she starts talking. Uh, Tara starts talking to Rick, right? Right, right. I think it's that one you're talking about. Yeah. So that, you see what I'm saying? So that's that's what I'm like wondering. I mean, right away they're trying to mesh them quick, you know, qu- not quickly, but it seems like it. And it's not it's not where it's abrupt. Like, man, they're trying too hard to make this, you know, mesh well. You know what I mean? Right. right. What's good about it? They went. I mean, that was traumatic. I mean, we're, we're, it's, it's already traumatic. I mean, zombies, whatever. That's traumatic. Or Walking Dead is is traumatic, right? The whole apocalypse and things. But the way that they were, you know, handling the cattle, so to speak. Kneeling the guys down, hit them in the head with a bat, and then slicing their throat. It's no wonder they all got real close. Right. You know what I mean? With all the stuff they were going through, I mean, that, right. You know, well, let's, let's talk about that. That the uh, the new villains, oh the yeah, bad yeah. guys. You know the terminus folks. Right, terminus. We have, we have uh, Andrew West. He's he plays Gareth. He's the right. uh, you know the leader of Terminus. I mean, what's his name? Chris Hardwick said he was basically a uh, a hipster, you know, in the apoc you know apoc the post apocalypse. Mm-hmm. Got this hipsters type dude, but you know you have him. You got uh, I forgot the guy's name, the one in the cabin. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm looking. I think it's Martin. I think they named his his, cat, his character Martin. Uh, but him, or, yeah, I think it's Martin. I'm not too sure. But anyways, you know, those are actually the only two they really focus on, aside from from Gareth's mom. But, right. But to me, to me, these, these Terminus folks were pretty, uh, aside from Gareth, we're kind of getting on my damn nerves. Yeah, <laughs> you know the du- the dude in the uh, in the cabin was chewing his gum like a damn camel, and you know I was just just the way he was talking to Tyrese. You know he was real confident about trying, you know, getting to that point where he has to kill Tyrese and Judith. Right, right. Where he said, uh, "I don't want to do this today" or whatever. You know, right at that point, I would have just beat his ass. Yeah, you know, and that it's funny you say that, you know, because that's really the first encounter the the, the group has with the uh, Terminus, right? Is the baseball cap? I can't remember his name, but the baseball cap and then Tyrese, right? Right. And you're seeing the difference in morals, right? You know, Tyrese, you know, the whole group is like this. So, like, we got to help people. We're we're, you know, we're all about each other. And then Terminus guys are like, dude, just hurry up. I mean, you know. Let's either do this today, do it later. I don't got time for this. You know what I mean? Like, he just seemed like he had something better to do. Like, he had to go play a video game or something. You know what I mean? Right. Like, he was real cocky about that. He was chewing his gum. It, it was funny. And that's weird, too, well, how they tied him up with his hands in front of him. Yeah, and they didn't tie his le- his legs, too. Yeah, it was like, that part to me was like, okay, you guys are smarter than that. You know what I mean? But... That, yeah. that was weird. He that, that one kind of got me. He wasn't restrained properly. Right, like we all know bondage, and that wasn't bondage, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, where was, where was the ball in the mouth? I didn't see that, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, they were, I mean, they were definitely missing by that. Him, right, you know? <laughs> yeah, the guy's name was Martin. Uh, was it act- Martin? Yeah, they don't have, the actor's name is Chris Coy. So, but he, yeah, he was one, one character from Terminus they introduced and, you know, aside, like I said, aside from, from Gareth's mom, you also, you know, you really got to see who Gareth was just by one episode, which was, you know, the first one, the premiere. Right, right. You know, you could tell he was, uh, you know, he's a strong leader, you know, he's got this whole crew at Terminus and you can also tell he's, he's one to do whatever it takes and he's one to survive right right no it, it's true i mean what i really liked because at first i was like um i like the way they they they're doing this whole flashback thing so we can understand them 
You know what I mean? Right. Um, now, I hope they, I mean, I heard on the Talking Dead, they were talking about, you know, they were going to do a lot more of that through this season five so we can understand who they were, you know? Because um, we didn't get to grow with them. You know what I mean? We, they just came out of nowhere, so we got to we gotta get their background. But Garrett, I mean, he, he kind of, I don't know, he's on another level, though, with, uh, you know, with Governor, though. You know what I mean? Like, who, who, so let's, from the past seasons, let's say, who do you think is more capable of taking over Terminus without any of those problems that this group ran into going there? Do you think the governor would have done a lot better? Would he be more gung ho and take the tank and shoot the walls of Terminus down or? Basically, who would win, the governor's crew or Terminus? I, you know what? To be honest, I would think governor, just because he had his held down without being insane. You know what I mean? Um, well, he was insane, but yeah. you know, closed doors. We need to take that yeah. back. Right? Yeah, I was gonna say he's uh he had some uh yeah, heads he had some, in uh, fish tanks, you know, yeah. and his 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 daughter, <laughs> right? Which, which you know I. You haven't read any of the books, and I haven't read any of bo- any of the books, the novels that came out. But uh. you know, they were they're pretty much spoilers. And my ex had told me about it. She read them, and you know that daughter that's in that in that in the governor's little room. Mm-hmm. You know that's not really the governor's daughter. The gov- basically, in the books, the governor isn't who he says he is. Oh. So, I didn't know that. Yeah, but that—that's you know that's a different story. But anyways, but yeah. So you know it's the reason why I said the governor can take it down because you know he lost everything in the first time, right? He lost his whole. I mean, he snapped and shot everybody, mm-hmm. right? But then he was able to rebuild again. You know what I mean? Right. So to me, that shows. I mean, we're gonna see that with Gareth because obviously they're hunting people now, right? But um. The governor, I think, could have taken it down. He he could probably run through that crew to me. You know what I mean? Right. Um, that's me, though. I mean, I haven't seen enough of Gareth, but just by the way they did things, I think governor will be able to... Because the people who f- did follow him at one point were down for him. You know what I mean? They weren't scared of him killing them. You know what I mean? He didn't have to trick them and say, hey, by the way... How did you like the food? You're like, oh, it's good. Well, you know, that's people. You know what I mean? I don't, you know, he didn't have to play those tricks. Gareth is more, um, you know, he gets in your head more. You know what I mean? So how, what do you think about this, this scenario? What if Merle was still alive and he was with Rick, Daryl, Michonne, and Carl coming up to Terminus? What do you think would have happened? Because, you know, Merle was, you know, he was all about, he was just an asshole. Yeah, right. You know? yeah. And, but he was he was badass, though. Right, he, right. He was a survivalist like Daryl. That's true. So if you have both of them together, that's like, that's like a, a big weapon there. Yeah, you know... Yeah, the part of me, man. I mean, I still wish Merle would have lasted longer. But yeah, if Merle was Merle was there, yeah, I can't, that's kind of hard, right? Merle's there, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, man, I think it would have been more. Um, I think he would have been down with Rick to go back and hunt. That's one for sure. Because you know, Rick was the only one. Like, hey, we got to go back. They can't live. They don't deserve to live. You know what I mean? You think he would have gone back and said, "Yeah, hey, Merle, let's like, do it." Yeah, he he was like, "What's up? What were we waiting for?" You know what I mean? Well, that's true because remember when they were in the prison, and Merle had kind of left the prison or left the Woodbury Woodbury, and ended up in the prison. He was giving them the suggestion they need to go to the governor. Don't right. wait. Don't wait for him to come to us. So yeah, I could see that. I could see that happening. Yeah, because, you know, he knew, you know, you got to cut off the head, you know what I'm saying? And so I would think he would have said, Rick, you know, let's go. If they're not coming with us, it's me and you, you know what I mean? Right, right. And and that's funny because I think Rick learned from the lesson of the governor as well. 
I think that's why he want. It wasn't the fact that he was as traumatized from the whole ordeal. I think he was like, look, we can't have this happen again. You know what I mean? Exactly. I think he was like, you know, I'm the only one that learned from this. You're all still too compassionate. You know what I mean? You know, yeah. there's a point where we, if the only way we can survive is to go back and get these guys, you know? So did you think, uh, did you think Tyrese killed Martin in the cabin? At first I did, I did think that. Honestly, I was like, because, you know, he just killed like all those walkers with his bare hands, right? Right. So I was like, I think he just, you know, then he barges through the... Like, I was juiced. I was hella juiced. Like man. the Kool-Aid man just yeah. barged through the door or the wall. and It was like, man, he came through and, it was, and he was just, man, he was tearing it. He was like, I was just surprised how he didn't kill him, you know, in front of us, really. Well, because he didn't, obviously, right? right? But I was surprised that he, you know, punched him. Oh, the way he did, you know what I mean? Right. And then, um, boy, that's the first time I seen Tyrese lie, though. To, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because he told Carol, "I got him." You know what I'm saying? And he wouldn't let her back into the cabin. He's like, "No, right. you don't need to go in there." Yeah, because so maybe yeah. he knew. Maybe he knew that he didn't kill him, or yeah, he had to have. That, cause that's the only thing I think of because. Um, <clears throat> When I when I saw that part, I was like, that was kind of weird. Why wouldn't he let her go in there, and, you know, kick his ass? You know what I mean? Even though he was dead, you know what I mean? Right. right. It was like it, it, now that I saw the sec the second episode, I was like, okay, so maybe he was hiding something. But what is he hiding? Why didn't he? Why do you want to hide the fact he didn't kill the guy? You know what I mean? Oh yeah, definitely. That's what I'm kind of curious. Like, why did he hide that? I mean, the dude was gonna choke. You know, he's gonna tear her head. You know what I mean? Break her neck. Yeah. And that, the only thing I can think of is, you know, he's so tired of killing people, you know what I mean? Or seeing that happen, you know, especially with the two girls, you know what I mean? Oh, geez. That stuff still haunts me, bro. Yeah, that was that that one was a wild episode. Uh, I had a buddy, you know, I got him into watching Walking Dead, and uh, he's from St. Louis. And he, you know, he flew down here for work, and we were watching season four because he hadn't seen it. And, you know, we watched season four and that episode with the two little girls where Lizzie ends up killing Mika and then Carol kills, Carol kills uh, Lizzie. Right. Yeah. And then at the end, Carol sitting there telling Tyrese, you know, I killed, I killed uh, Karen and the other guy, you know, in the prison. Right. And just looking at Tyrese's face, you know, my my buddy was like, Tyrese is probably thinking, what the hell is wrong with these white people? Yeah. You know, what have I gotten myself into? You know, <laughs> this and that. But, but yeah, um, there's a lot more to his story, I think, that they're going to they're gonna end up revealing. Yeah, they, they need to now because... You know, because he's, he's got a lot to explain. Right. Yeah, exactly. Well, not a lot, but, you know, he, he did tell Carol, you know, that he killed this dude, and he didn't. Right. Because now I'm going to see, so, like, is it, you know, we all know somehow they're going to have to encounter each other at one point in this season, right? The group's going to find out one's alive, and, you know, they're all going to, you know, there's going to be a big clash again. And then Carol, I'm, I'm curious how Carol's going to react to Tyrese. Like, look, you told me he was dead. You know what I mean? Right, right. You know, and the way Carol is now, dude, I mean, you know, she's she's got gall, man. It's like she don't take shit from nobody. You know what I mean? Right. She's right. totally 180. Like she is, you know, I'd roll with her. You know what I mean? Yeah. At first I wouldn't. Now I want to. And it's like you would think about that. You know, I'm like, man, what's she going to do with Tyrese? <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Because yeah. you're about the safety of the baby, too, you know? Right. You know, because he, the guy can't, you know, obviously didn't turn. He came back and, dude, crazy. So the only thing that's weird, you know, the only thing is weird, Gareth got shot, right? He did get shot. I um, mean, he's like a nothing, though. And remember, Rick got his ass beat, and he had to take down a couple of day, uh, a day or two to rest, you know? Well, it's it's funny because I made a point to the same buddy that 
remember when Rick and Tyrese got into it? Yeah. And Re- Rick beat the hell out of Tyrese? Right. So, and Tyrese is a big dude, right? Right. And he's supposed to be an ex-football player, this and that. But then Rick gets his ass beat by the governor. You're right. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So it's it's uh it's it's just weird how that how that worked out. But the uh you know, with Gareth, yeah, he did get shot. I think he got shot they made it look like he just got shot in the shoulder or something or the leg yeah. or whatever, but But if he looked pretty strong though, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Coming I, coming into know, episode two, right? Is right, that what you're talking about, yeah, yeah, and this is like, and you know, considering the fact that we got one hour to tell a story, so I'm, I'm I have to assume days pass. You know what I mean? Well, I just let's talk to... about that because, uh, we'll, we'll we'll skip through and we're gonna move on to episode two. But you know, in episode one, you had them escaping terminus, then you had the reuniting of. Uh, Carl, Rick, and Judith, Tyrese, and Sasha, Daryl, and Carol, you know, Carol and the whole group. So there was a lot of uh, reuniting going on, but probably one of the most talked about scenes from that premiere was the very end, or after the the post credit scene, which was uh, Morgan, the return of Morgan. Right, right, right. You, You saw that, right? Yeah, I did see that. So, rumor has it, and this goes with your whole time thing, is that this could possibly be a time lapse into the, I believe, into the future sometime. Oh. So, you know, there, there's still a lot of of stuff to be revealed because, I mean, go again, we're going to go into episode two, but you do see some markings on the trees in episode two. They're not the same markings, but there are markings in the trees that you see... Right. There's a marking that Morgan is trailing for some reason. Right. So, again, rumor is that there is some kind of time lapse, but I don't know. I, I don't see. I don't see how that's gonna. I, I'm sure it'll work. They'll make it work, but right now, I just don't see it. I, my assumption was here. Here's what I thought. Um, that marking on the tree was actually made by Rick and Rick and Daryl because when they went to go look for the bag, Daryl pointed at a tree and he said, "Oh, there it is." Right. You know, a lot of people thought it was the shovel, but the shovel was buried underneath the leaves. Right. He pointed up. He yeah. Was pointing like, and he you know, pointed at the tree. So yeah. I thought that that marking was to you know so they knew. Okay, well here's the bag, and that's the marking that Morgan saw. But I may have been wrong considering these rumors going around that it's possibly some kind of time lapse. It could still be a marking from the tree, but his character, Morgan, who played, you know, played by Lenny James, he finds it later on, you know, a year later or whatever. Nah, that's very true. I mean, yeah, because it, it's, it's more calmer when he's walking through this, you know, the, the woods, right? Right. It's actually a more calmer moment. There's no, like, smoke in the air. Right, you know? exactly. So, and that to me that makes a lot of sense because I mean I was confused on that one. I mean I appreciated that they threw that in there so I can be like more in suspense. You know what I mean? Because now I'm really anticipating his how he's gonna come into this you know season. Right. But at the same time I was like, fuck, you could have waited like two more episodes because there was a lot going on. <laughs> there was. There was. You know? a it lot. was a lot to grasp, and I mean. Especially with Gareth and the way his crew was, I mean, and then they rushed right into it and caught up. It was like, holy cow, man! You know what I mean? Right. Like it, it, it is going fast. So that 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 just leads to me to believe that this season five is going to be like all like intense. You know what I mean? It should be. I mean, reading rumors and stuff and looking at some spoiler groups, it's gonna it's gonna be a good ride. Yeah, because the only thing that sucks is you, we gotta wait. For that mid-season break, and then it won't come back till like late January, early February. Yeah, that's gonna suck, man. So, but for the time being, I think Game of Thrones will be back on by then. So, well, Game of Thrones comes on April, right? Is it April? I think it's April. I thought it was April. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Then I'm. I won't have shit to do then. Yeah, I guess oh. we're gonna have to just 
I'll be depressed. Yeah. I'll just watch then all I my Blu-rays. I guess we'll have to talk about it, the comic book, and see how they tie together then. I'll have to probably get them now. Yeah. You know, so. But yeah, so talk about season, I mean, see, uh, uh, episode two. So I have to address this part because this confused the hell out of me. And so I, I don't know if you're with me on this. So, you know, Bob, right? Right. He falls into the water when they're in the uh, the uh, food um Food bank. We're in the food bank, right? And he falls in the water and comes out, and he's a boss, right? He kills. He, he survives it, right? But when they're at the uh, the church, you know, he's freaking out. You know what I'm saying? Like, something's up with him. With him and Sasha, he's like, one more time. You know how he's like, one more time. One more time. She kisses him, but this time it was way different how he was acting. It wasn't in joy. It was like in grief. You know what I mean? Right. Well, then, let's start from the beginning of the okay. episode. All right. Um, you know, because you mentioned church, and right. our listeners who didn't watch the episode may wonder, well, what the hell is this church? So, uh, basically, a lot of storytelling and explanation was given in this episode, I would say, because you have Tara explaining to Rick what's going on, then you have Carol's story to Daryl and Rick, you know, so there's there's a lot of storytelling, but... They introduced a new character also, uh, Father... Gabriel. What's that? Is it Father Gabriel? Yes, Father Gabriel. That... His character is played by... Uh, Seth, Seth Gilliam. Yeah. Real good guy. This guy is actually really nice. Um, for those that don't know, I collect a, a lot of autographs and go to a lot of conventions. And I had gone to a Teen Wolf convention for the MTV Teen Wolf TV show. Uh-huh. And Seth Gilliam's actually on that show. So during this, this convention, I didn't realize he was going to be there. And I'm outside smoking a cigarette. And, you know, this is at a hotel. And all of a sudden, he comes out, lights one up. And I'm just, like, playing dumb. I'm like, hey, aren't you on the show? But I know who he is, right? And he's all, yeah. And he's talking about, we're just sitting there chopping it up. And he's talking about. The whole making appearances and stuff like that at shows and how, you know, he doesn't really like charging people for autographs or he doesn't get that whole concept that, you know, he'd rather just sign and let it go. Right, right. So anyways, he, he it's funny because at that time we were talking at that convention, another lady came out that was smoking with us and they were talking and he said, yeah, I got to fly back. This was on a Saturday and he's saying, ah, I got to fly back tomorrow. And they film, they film Teen Wolf in Atlanta or Georgia, just like Walking Dead, right? Okay. And so a couple weeks later, I'm online and I find out, oh, they signed Seth Gilliam to play Father Gabriel for Walking Dead. So when I saw Seth at the premiere a couple weeks ago or a few weeks ago, him and I were talking about it and... I asked him, I said, did you know you were going to be part of the show? And he said, no, he's all, actually the next day I, I had to audition for it and this and that, but really cool guy, you know. But anyways, we we were talking about how he was introduced in, you know, in this episode and back to lots of stories being told or explanations, you know, between the characters, they left his like a closed book. Right. He has still has a lot of explaining to do. And you look good naked, man. Thank you. Thank you. For those I that t- don't know, we're we're on uh we're on Skype recording this podcast and he just took his shirt off and Yep. <laughs> because it was very itchy and I couldn't get through the shirt. <laughs> so I had to I had to be something <clears throat> drastic. Yep. So anyways, but- back to back to the discussion though. Yeah, so they brought Father Gabriel out, and this is the church that Kevin was mentioning earlier, was Father Gabriel was held up in a, in a church all this time. And he scavenged, he looked for food, he has, again, he has some secrets, and rumor has it the secrets are that he's, he locked up, or locked out his parish people out of the church and just let them die. Right, and yeah. That that's supposed to be the that that's the secret that was in the comic books. 
what he did. And remember I mentioned earlier a buddy of mine who reads the comics. He had explained to me that they're really playing this one out for the show because in the comics it was like two two books, two comics that they explained it and boom, it was done. So this is the church that Kevin was talking about where you know the character Bob was acting funny. Right. He yeah. had gotten he had gotten bit or I don't want to say that, but the assumption was he got bit or scratched when he got pulled into the water when him, Rick and Sasha went out scavenging for food and supplies. So back to what you were saying, Kevin, about him acting weird. Yeah, so I was kind of confused because I didn't know why he. Um, I'm, I thought he got bit. That's just me. You know what I mean? And that's what everybody thought. Yeah, I mean, because why would you leave the camp like that? You know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, almost like you're about to ghost. You know what I mean? Um, right. It's like he knew. Right. Like he knew something, and so he separated himself. So that's why it's kind of interesting because it's like, I mean, he was crying and everything. You know what I mean? I was like, all right, you're saying goodbye. The way you're doing it, you're saying goodbye. You know what I mean? Right. But then again, you know, it could be that he thought he got bit too. That could be. You know what I mean? It could be possible. Well, in in, in the comics, that storyline is actually Dale in the comics. I don't know if you knew. Oh. But Dale had gotten bit and... We haven't set, talked about it yet, but in the comics, Dale got bit, and he got basically knocked out and taken by the hunters, and the hunters were chopped off his leg, and they were eating his meat. But in the comics, they also found out that the meat was, so they call it, tainted. Right. Because he had gotten bit. Right. So they're, they're doing Bob's story... Just like Dale's story in the comics. But the hunters, Gareth, doesn't even know that he got, supposedly got bit, possibly got bit or whatever. And I don't know if they're going to reveal that this, you know, this Sunday. Because in the in the previews, they show Gareth beating the shit out of Bob. Right, so right, maybe right. Maybe Bob explained so to him, I got bit, you guys are screwed. Yeah, dumbass. <laughs> right. So I don't know, and I don't know too much about the Hunters and their storyline in the comics, but that may be what what happens in, in Sunday's episode. Yeah, and then you go back, and then, um, so then we keep, I guess I'm at the end of this, because really that's where it was, it, you know, I'm not trying to take it to the end already, but it, it was just like, so Carol, you know, um, if everybody doesn't know, They've Daryl and Carol going through, you know, foraging while the other group is going to the food bank. Right. Right. And then they come up upon the car. And, you know, Carol's charging the battery to, you know, to say we're going to use this for a bug out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. This is our bug out right here. We're going to use this car in case we need to separate from the church. And this is where we're going to rendezvous. And, um, and, you know... So same timing, Bob is leaving the group, you know, he's looking back crying, you know, probably singing some songs to himself. And then Carol jets out as well. And but Daryl, man, that dude, he's he's awesome, man. <laughs> he tracked yeah. her and knew she was gonna head out, you know what I mean? And so, but somehow, so this is weird to me. So you remember when Bob got knocked out, right? Mm-hmm. And it was a guy in a mask. I think it was a guy in a mask. Hoodie. Or hoodie. 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 Well, I almost thought it was the same group that grabbed... Um, Beth. Beth. Right. So now that sometimes I feel like Terminus is the people who grab Beth. You know what I mean? Right. No, like, it's it's a... There's a hospital involved in that. Oh, okay. And, you know, people people are kind of jumping to the conclusion because they see a... A cross, if you want to call it. Uh, to me, I, I, I may have to watch it again, but 
people think that that's a cross and there's some relation to Father Gabriel. Yeah, right, right. But, you know, you look at, to me, it was more of a plus sign, you know, like the hospital signs that mm, they have. The medics? I don't know what that's called. You... The medic sign? Like, it's like a little, it's like a ro- it's like a plus. Yeah. yeah they... Like a paramedic or something, like a sign or something. Right. And that, you know, that's the same sign on the back of that car. Right. And then, you know, seeing clips from, from from Beth's side of the story, she's in a hospital. And there was actually recordings or pictures on uh, one of the websites or one of the face. I think it's a Facebook page or a website, either a website, Facebook page or Twitter account called Walking Dead Locations. Uh-huh. Where fans go out throughout Georgia and take pictures and stuff like that of all the sites they film at, even current filming and... They were seen filming at a hospital. Oh, okay. So that's interesting. That's uh, that could be it. But again, just depends on how the the writers write the story. Right. I wonder, um, out of curiosity, where you know you think Carol's gonna go back and just um, just go back on her own? I hope not. I I like how I like how her character has progressed. Right, right. Um aside from Maggie or Lauren Cohan, uh Carol, Melissa McBride, her her character, I mean, is is dope. Yeah. You yeah. actually see her grow, you know. I was interviewed by Last year at the season four premiere, I got interviewed. I forgot what TV show it was on site for Time Warner, you know, and they asked me what I like. And it's the character development, you know, and you, yeah. you get to see these characters grow. You look at Carl. Everybody hated him. And I think a lot of people still do. They hate his character just because he seems like this little punk and he became a punk to his dad. And he, he pretty much still is for the most part. Right. You know, he when they found Judith, he didn't even hug his dad. He went straight for the girl. Right. So, anyways, but the the whole character development, I, I think Carol would be a good asset to this group. Yeah, well, you know, it's funny you say that. Because um, Rick, you know, remember they were walking. And um, I forgot at what point in, uh, in episode two. But, you know, Rick said, can we join your group? Yeah, he said, he said something to the likes of about surviving or whatever and right. he said can we join you you know but that Rick will still be the leader I'm assuming right. but I, I don't know what he meant by that really I think it was his way of saying um, well he, he said thank you already like 20 times right right I think that was his way of saying all is forgotten you know what I mean let's yeah. start I think I think that's what he was trying to say well like you know what what happened at the j- uh, at the prison is over, you know. Right. Just act like we just met each other, kind of thing, you know. I felt like that was his clean slate, kind of approach, you know. Yeah, no, that 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 makes sense, you know. Um, but yeah, I Carol is badass in my book, and they need to keep her in, you know, as long as long as possible. Yeah, especially especially you know what was cool, and I'm not trying to be like. You know, a switch hit or anything, but a man, it was pretty cool how Daryl ran up to her, you know, in the, you know, and was like all about Carol. You know what I mean? Right, right. Like his whole world was just like way better because she came back into his life. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, you see them bond a lot now. Like now he's doing the talking. You know what I mean? Right. Where back then she was always trying to get into his, you know, mysterious, uh, his mystery, you know, she was always trying to figure him out. Now he's like, "What's up with you?" You know what I mean? Like, we, we got to talk, you know. And he's he's not stopping. Like, he keeps freaking sticking to her. Like, he needs to find out what's up with her, you know. Well, Daryl does know. I, I doesn't Daryl know? Yeah, Daryl knew what happened with uh, how she killed. Did he? I don't. I think I think Rick told him. I thought the only one who knew was Maggie. Well, Rick, no, because uh, Daryl Daryl was mad at him at one point. Like, why did you let her go? This and that, and Rick's like, I had to do what I needed to do, whatever. So I think he did know. 
Okay. I'm almost, I'm almost positive, but... But, yeah, he's... His story with her, I mean, they just need to get it on in the woods or something. <laughs> well, you know, he's going to he's gonna have that uh, Betty Jughead... Uh, I mean, Betty Jughead, Betty Veronica, Archie kind of thing going, because, you know... <laughs> He's all about Beth too now. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, I mean, he's, he's he's down for her too. But you know, there was a moment, you know, that I thought they were gonna hook up too, him and Beth. You know. Well, Beth's supposed to be like a seventeen-year-old or whatever. Yeah, but you. Well, who cares? There's no right? there's no law. There's in, no law in the, the post-apocalyptic world. Who's gonna Who's gonna get him? Right. Yep. Yeah, See, I mean those 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 uh those teachers getting busted those. Fine ass teachers getting busted for having sex with students. Yeah, dude. They would have no problem. None. None whatsoever. They'll 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 fare off well out there, you know. Yep. So but uh yeah, that's that's pretty much closing out, you know, the uh season five premiere along with episode two. Right. All right. Do you uh, do you have any final thoughts on you know wh- or what are you expecting out of season three? We got a, a few more minutes left before we close this this episode out, but are there any final thoughts on what you think or how you feel about the show, how it's going? Um, I'm I'm next? I'm in, I think what I'm I'm interested in seeing is because the group's splitting up all, all, almost already. You know what I mean? Um, because of the fact that there's a lot of division. Not division, but there's a lot of, you know, soap opera stuff going on. Daryl and Carol are chasing down for Beth. You know, Bob's missing now. You know what I mean? Right, right. Uh, they still got to get to Washington. Right. You know, so what are they going to do? And then you know, now they got this guy, you know, Father Gabriel. So now they got a mystery guy, you know, with them. Because, you know, we got to know that they don't know what happened to Bob. You know what I mean? So what is Rick going to decide to do? Like, you know, we don't know where Carol and Daryl went because, you know, there's no cell phones, right? Right. So there's no way of knowing what happened to them. Does he, I'm curious to see what decision he makes to, do we move on without them? You know what I mean? Or do we hunt, do we look for them? You know? Well, they will get to Washington, I believe, in this season. Right. Again, from what I've been seeing, they they run into... There was pictures taken from a, a filming, one of the filmings, and there's there's a town called Alexandria, and that's actually in the comics. And okay. I, I, I don't know the, the timeline of it. Either they find Alexandria before DC or after DC. I can't remember, but they're filming Alexandria scenes now. Wow, Okay. Yeah, that, I'm just yeah. That's what I'm thinking about. Season, uh, episode three is like, what is the decisions Rick's gonna make? Because there's three p- key people missing. You know what I mean? Right. Well, they're all key. Let me take that back. But there's three people missing now, and he doesn't know what's going on because their tracker's gone. You know what I mean? That's true. That's you know, true. And, they use and, uh, well, Michonne. Well, she's it, also a tracker. Yeah, she's a tracker. But you know, Daryl's like. You know, that's Rick's go-to for now. Michonne's is, is like his secondary, you know what I mean? Right. Well, you know, another thing, too, is... uh, So, not sure if you know this also, Daryl was never in the comics. Okay? Oh. Uh, with Daryl not being in the comics, Rick's right-hand man in the comics was Sergeant Abraham Ford. Interesting. And now that he's in, you know, in place... He he's a tracker too, though I think, or he was able to track. Like, remember when they were looking for Maggie? Yeah. In season four, you know they were able to track. Like, oh, when they found the tunnel, you know he's looking at the ground, at the tracks, or whatever. So he has that skill too. Plus being in the military, whatever. Right, right. So maybe they'll start. They'll start uh, building that relationship between him and Ford, Rick and Ford. Yeah, that's that's possible. That's what I'm kind of interested to see in, in episode three is the decisions Rick's going to make, and you know, you know these new cast members where they step up into the play. You know, right, right, definitely. Cool, man. This is exciting, man. I can't wait. Two days, right? Or well, one day now. Yeah, and one day for those that don't know, 
we are up very, very late at night getting this done for you guys. Yeah, we, we um, have night talk sessions about Walking Dead. <laughs> that's right. Hey, we're we're excited for Sunday, so yeah. I don't know. I I didn't realize Kevin's a, an old friend of mine, and I didn't realize that he watched the show. I don't know if I got you into it. I don't know if yeah. you seeing my Facebook posts, whatever. But you know, he he ended up being a fan of the show, and I was I was a fan from the very first episode, yeah. and just grew yeah. to make sure I'm always home on Sunday nights to watch it. So, yeah. Besides this show and Game of Thrones, but this show right here is is kind of I I do a lot of social media marketing, and I shut down for one hour, and I tell everybody on my networks I'm not talking to you, <laughs> literally for this show. It is amazing. I mean, yeah, honestly, just to let you know a little background. Yeah, yeah. It was because I I did watch it from time to time, but it was the fact that you followed it so you know, religiously. Religiously, yep. You know what I mean. Um, it got my interest because anybody who's passionate about anything, just you know, okay, it can't be that crappy. You know what I mean? So right. that's got into it a lot more. It was because of the fact that you you went to all the signings and stuff. So I was like, all right. So I I did the Netflix binge. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And and I got a lot of people actually doing that. It's it's weird. Like my kid's mom, she never. She's the type that wouldn't even watch that stuff. She would think this is stupid zombies blah 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 how good is this and she's you know we're not together anymore but she's still watching the show her dad and, and i think it may be because my son watches the show as well so if he's with her he watches it he if he's with me he watches it here so you know it, it's 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 a good show and everybody's if you haven't really watched it because there are people out there i've heard oh i don't watch walking dead you better binge on it yeah the the first season you'll get hooked and it's only i think six episodes or eight episodes i think it's yeah i think it's man i think it is six six or eight but they it was basically a whole pilot season and even before the season ended they signed on for season two so they knew this was going to be a big thing right right but it's it is i mean they have a they have a after show See, we're not the only ones doing this. I mean, what the talking did is right after. Right. And right. I used to never watch, you know, wrap ups like that, but I watched that too. Yeah, because... a lot of shows are doing that now. Yeah. They did they... uh Breaking Bad. Like uh what is that called? Yeah, they did that for Breaking Bad. I forgot what it was called. After after the episodes they had a show you know, a show and I think Chris Hardwick was doing it. Talking Bad. Oh yeah, that's right. Dope. I did see that one time, but it, they had Talking I, Bad. Sons of Anarchy has one. It's called uh, After the Anarchy, I think. So uh-huh. a lot of shows are doing Q and A type TV shows after the episode airs, and I think that that may migrate to something new with TV. Yeah, well, I like it. We can get involved with something. Um, that you know, that's you know, you know people are embracing and we can have our own little, you know, part in this whole, how this all plays out, you know? Um, that's what, that's what I think is interesting about the walking dead, how they make this all, uh, they're setting the, they're setting the standard to me, uh, of how TV shows got to be more interactive with their, their, you know, their fans, you know what I mean? Right. Right. And, and this is giving us a chance to be a part of something that's really great. I mean, I've never heard of any of these actors before, and besides, you know, besides Norman Reedus, you know what I mean. Um, and I'm, I'm like, man, I got to follow all these. I'm, I'm, tr- I'm trying to follow all of them on Instagram. Norman Reedus is hilarious, by the way. Right. <laughs> yeah, he, he posts a bunch of crazy stuff. Yeah, he's hilarious. But um. But yeah. But yeah man. So this is great. I'm, I'm looking forward to. Uh, to episode three. All right. So for our listeners out there, this is our first episode, and uh, we do hope to bring you a lot more. We will have special guests. Uh, everything won't be Walking Dead related. We will be talk covering other things, but for the most part, this is the hottest thing right now. So mm-hmm. we figured we'd have a little discussion about it. So 
I did mention Kevin's websites in the beginning. Uh, I'm not sure if he's going to open up any social medias for those pages or those websites, but on our end, you can check out the nerdinitiative.com. Also, find us on YouTube under the Nerd Initiative, Facebook, same thing, Instagram. Just do searches, Twitter, we're all on there. Follow us, like us, and be sure to subscribe to this podcast on iTunes. And we will see you on either Sunday or Monday. Yep, looking forward to it. All right. There was an idea called the Nerd Initiative. The idea was to bring together a group of remarkable people, see if they could become something more, see if they could work together when we needed them to, to fight the battles that we